here's something different, something that's actually, <laughs> it's a great idea. Guess what? The power hub here, yeah, you know, the little control box that outputs USB from the solar panel, it's separate. <laughs> and this has got a ton of advantages. You know, I'll get to it here. We'll go through it in depth and I'll show you, you know, all the things I've tested out with this thing as well. And this is a very small solar panel. This is only 20 watts. So portability and longevity, these are the two things, <laughs> you know, if those are the two, two main factors you're looking for in a solar panel, take a look at this one. So yeah, there's a bunch of advantages to this design, this setup, and that's if you are using the USB control box, guess what? <laughs> you don't even have to use it. You could actually just directly output power straight from the solar panel. All there is is that, that little output cable, it's a 5521. But still, this is so cool because this is kind of like the same thing that a big full-size panel, you know, 100 watt, 200 watt panel has, you know, with MC4 outputs. It's just a direct output and that's it. There's nothing else, <laughs> you know, so... It, that just makes the water resistance, it just makes it better. You don't have to worry about having this little control box on the panel itself because that's always a weak link, right? So, and then obviously you don't, you know, if you're gonna use this connected straight to a power station or something and you're not using the USB box, you don't need to bring it and you don't need to have it on the solar panel. So it just, it makes the solar panel lighter, thinner for sure and it's just, you know, one less thing to have on there, one less thing that's going to break. Now, if you are using USB, there's still a ton of advantages to this design. I mean, number one is just look how far that solar panel can be from you. I mean, it's like, it's like five or six feet in addition to however long your USB cord is, right? So this is awesome because you could have the solar panel out. Let's say you're inside a tent, maybe even in your van or RV, yeah, the solar panel can be way out there and then you can still be using the device that's charging. And then kind of the, this is the, the real big advantage here is, you know, like I said, if you're concerned about longevity, you want to buy something that's going to last. Yeah, guess what? Any of these control boxes that are attached to the solar panel, what's going to happen? You know, you got to leave the solar panel out in the hot sun, don't you? <laughs> it's kind of the whole idea. So guess what? that control box is just going to heat up. And then that control box itself is producing its own heat, isn't it? Because it's converting the solar panel voltage to the USB output. So internally it's heating up and then, yeah, the sun is just, you know, you can see, <laughs> you can see what's going to happen here. It's going to, it's just going to shorten life on it, isn't it? Because yeah, heat is the number one thing. It's the number one thing that kills like any kind of electronic device. And you know, so the solar panel itself, is IP67 because the front part is coated, yeah, ETFE. So they use the best coating here too. You know, it's not the cheaper PET coating. This coating is fantastic. In fact, it, you know, it's basically almost as good as glass and it'll last almost as long. It's almost as transparent, but yet it's very light and it's not gonna break, is it? So yeah, it's just, it's just an awesome coating. And then the rest of the solar panel is actually got this like waterproof coating on this like polyester cloth. And so yeah, I did test this thing out. I tested it with the Jackery 160, as I mentioned, my smartphone and my Chromebook. So we'll get to that here in a second. But yeah, so I tested it two ways as well, just laying flat on the ground because there, there's no kickstands with this product. You know, again, it's just, it, the whole idea here is to get just enough power to charge up your phone, basically. That's what this panel is for. Now, you know, so I did, Actually, you can see here, yeah, I kind of angled it up. I leaned it up against my Jackery, and actually I was kind of surprised. You know, the Jackery is very small. It was able to hold it up, and the panel actually stayed flat too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it didn't try to fold in and stuff like that. So the Jackery 160, as I mentioned, only has PWM. So, yeah, it's probably not getting all the power that's there. I was getting 13 to 14 watts. And yeah, so with MPPT, probably would have got a couple more watts, you know, maybe 15, maybe 16 watts, something like that, which, yeah, it's only a 20 watt panel, isn't it? So, you know, as you know about solar panels, you're never going to get the rated output. I mean, that's like a very unusual circumstance. And the thing that did surprise me as well, when I just had it laying on the ground, 
it was still getting 11 watts. So just flat on the ground. Now, of course, you know, we're in April now, so the sun is getting higher in the sky, but still, I thought that was pretty impressive. And because this thing does have that direct output, you know, the 18, 19 volts without the control box, yeah, you can use it with any power station, any power station. And they do mention that this thing has a smart chip inside of it as well. So, you know, if a cloud passes by and the power obviously is going to drop when you're using this USB output, guess what? Yeah, when the sun comes back out, it's just going to it's just going to go back to where it was and in fact, even when a cloud passed by, as you can see here, my phone still said it kept charging. So kind of cool that this, you know, this USB output will actually give you reliable charging. And so, you know, are there any limitations with this solar panel? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to charge everything from USB, straight from USB. So I was able to get it to charge the Chromebook, but I really had to, I really had to fuss around with the angle of the solar panel and like get it like perfectly aligned to the sun. And this of course too was only at like peak solar, like around noon. Could I get it to actually charge the Chromebook? Otherwise, yeah, it started to complain like the, the little USB junction box actually started to make like a little buzzing noise. If it just, you know, it was trying to output, <laughs> it was trying to output power that it just couldn't output, you know, because either the conditions or the solar panel just, you know, wasn't big enough. So yeah, that's, that's why, again, why I was just, I always say like, get a power station, the power station, the solar charge controller and the power station can accept any, any amount of charge, you know, it can be trickle charging when the conditions are poor and you can get maximum power when the conditions are great. Right. And at the same time, if you have a power station that supports pass through charging, which almost all of them do, you can constantly output, USB at like a constant fixed rate, right? So that's what that's what pretty much all devices want to have anyways. Now, yes, the smartphones, they do seem to have an ability, a willingness to be able to charge at almost anything, you know, so that again, if you want to just use this solar panel without a power station, yeah, it's going to work great for your smartphone. It's not going to work that great for other devices, especially larger devices. So that's where you say, yeah, you always want to have like a little bit of extra buffer, get the 30 watt panel <laughs> if you want to charge some bigger devices or like I said, just get a power station. And again, that's why I wouldn't recommend getting the 10 watt version because then you're going to be very limited. So and then another cool thing about this thing is they do give you two carabiners so you can hook them up to the solar panel here and then, yeah, you can like hang it off your backpack. So this is awesome. Like if you're out hiking, you got your backpack on your back anyways. And this solar panel is so light, so thin, you wouldn't even notice the extra weight on your back. You could just hang, have it hanging off your backpack and it's going to charge. You can have your phone in your backpack or whatever charging while you're hiking. <laughs> and as far as everything else they give you, they give you all the cables you could need. So they give you that extension cable to attach that control box power hub to the solar panel. And then they also give you a mail to mail. These are, by the way, this is, it's all 5521s, but they do give you an adapter for eight millimeter for like Jackery and Blue Eddy. And then they also give you a 5525. And they do give you this little bag as well. It's like a little pouch bag. Yeah, and you can actually fit the solar panel in there if you want. But I kind of wish it had some kind of like folding Velcro top with like an actual little handle or something because you can't really you can't really carry it by itself like that. You know, there's nothing to grab onto. But I guess, yeah, the, the, main, the main appeal here, the main concept with this product is you're probably, you're gonna have your backpack or something with you anyways, right? So it can slide right into your backpack there. And like I said, you hardly even notice it's in your backpack. Now, the last little thing to talk about it, and you might have seen this when I showed it earlier, this little power hub USB control box it actually outputs 12 volts as well. So yeah, you got the USB-A, the USB-C, and then 12 volts. So, <laughs> and it's like, you know, one amp or a little bit over one amp is what it can do. So yeah, it's just kind of a weird, I don't, I don't really know, what would you even run with that? Yeah, so hopefully you just kind of found this test, this product interesting. And if you did, you know, make sure you give the video a like. And yeah, thanks for watching.